السلام عليكم ورحمة الله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما يا أرحم الراحمين بس إن شاء الله next time just for after سنة رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم said أفضل صلاة الرجل في بيته إلى المكتوبة the best place for a man to pray is at home except obligatory prayer so in the mosque it's preferred just to pray two rak'ah and the rest do it at home that's the sunnah then you will, your children will see you praying and the barakah also will descend at home don't make all your prayer just in the mosque so make the most of your prayer at home then Allah wa ta'ala will give barakah to that home inshallah <clears throat> Last time we talked about, we're still in Surat Qaf, and the previous lessons, we always interrupt because there's very short time. Now, now our lessons after Isha, which is now we have, we have no interruption, inshallah. So last time we talked about that the journey that Allah wa ta'ala, he, the Surah is about the resurrection, and Allah wa ta'ala want to open the eyes of people from different angles. The first angle is the absolute knowledge of Allah wa ta'ala. قَدْ عَلِمْنَا مَا تَنْقُصُ الْأَرْضُ مِنْهُمْ The second angle is look at the universe. And you'll see how Allah created this amazing universe. The third angle is look at the history. How many civilizations, they deny the message of Allah and Allah destroyed all of them. And he come back to also absolute knowledge. And now he take this absolute knowledge knowledge take a person with a journey since Allah ta'ala created us till the death come to the resurrection till people of hellfire go to hellfire until people of Jannah go to Jannah so he said we indeed created man and we know what his soul whispered to him or her so you are under the watchfulness, full watchfulness. Every move, every movement, every statement you say, every action, even every thought. Not just, Allah know it, there's two angels, their job is just to record everything. And these two angels with you since you born till you die. One on left side, one on right side. But out of the mercy of Allah, he said, مَا يَلْفِضُ مِنْ قَوْلٍ He said, not even when, when he says something, then they will record. They don't record your thoughts. That's out of the mercy of Allah. Till you act according these thoughts, then they will record it. But sometimes thoughts come to your mind, no, Allah knew it, but they don't record it. So these two angels with you all the life. Raqibun Atid. Some people think that Raqib Atid is the names of these two angels. And one called Raqib, one called Atid. That's wrong. Raqib Atid is just an adjective to the both angels. That's why he will repeat Atid now after a while also. Hada ma ladayya Atid. Because Raqib is watching carefully. Anything, he will write it down. Atid, it means he is very strict. He is very strict. He will never miss anything. That's his job. Raqibun Atid. So this is the first journey you are doing the life under this careful watch. So that's give us a big lesson that to fear Allah wa ta'ala. And know that whatever, even we, if we are alone, there's always two angels with, with us writing everything. So this surah want to build the watchfulness. He will say in the people of Jannah that their secret is they fear Allah when they are alone. Man khashiya rahman bil 
it's very easy to, for a person to pretend in public that he is pious. That's very easy. And we are human beings, but we know ourselves. When you pretend in the public, but when you are alone, you are a different person, this is a big problem. That's why our scholars said, if you want to come close to Allah, one of the most important type of action is always keep a secret ibadat between you and your Lord. Some qiyamul layl, no one knows about this. Switch off the light in the middle of the night and stand up and pray and make long prayer. That's a sign that you fear Allah Because when you come to the masjid and pray, everyone sees, that's fine, but we don't, that's not a sign of khashya. If you do your prayer in the mosque and you do it alone, that's a good sign. Or give a charity. Rasulullah said, حَتَّى لَا تَعْلَمَ شِمَالُهُ مَا أَنْفَقَتْ يَمِينُهُ You want to make this metaphor? He gives secretly that even his left hand doesn't know what his right hand gives as charity. Donate. That type of secret ibadat is very important. Very important because nowadays we live we always in public, we try, we live in, in a time, difficult time. People now tend to show everything in media. You go to the park with your family, you post straight away. Look, I'm in the park. They know all the details of your life. Oh, I went to France. We are here. I'm now eating. I'm drinking. We are in the lunch. We, some people ever, oh, we pray Qiyamul Layl and make the video here. MashaAllah, may Allah accept or your good deeds. So that type of mentality, we should in this time do a lot of secret ibadat. That secret ibadat, well, it will benefit you in your grave. Secret ibadat like Qiyamul Layl, like Sadaqa, like Munajat. What's Munajat? Munajat is to talking to your Lord. How is that? When you pray in Qiyamul Layl, and completed two rak'ah, sit down and talk to your Lord. In your own language. Don't prepare any words. Don't read from any paper. Just from yourself. Say to him, O oh Allah, how many times I try to repent and I always, I promise you I will never come back to that sin. And I always fail. I ask you in that moment. There is no one can see me here except you. No one can hear me except you to forgive me. Oh Allah, I don't know what's the end of my life. I ask you in this moment to make the last word of my life, La ilaha illallah. Oh my Lord, if I am be with the, my, in my grave tomorrow, make my grave peace of Jannah. Oh my Lord, if you gather billions of people, and many people they're sweating a lot, and the sun is so close to us, I heard from my prophet that there are certain people that will under the, the shade of the throne of Almighty. Make me among those, those people. Speaking to your Lord every single night, alone. No one knows about this. That's one of the so powerful acts of worship. That will give you that this is secret between you and Allah. Let's derive us from the wife of Imran. When Allah talk about the wife of Imran, wife of Imran, she told her, Lord, everything. Rabbi inni nadartu laka ma fi batni muharrara. She's alone, secretly. And Allah told us that secret moment make the Quran recited to the day of judgment. Oh Allah, I'm pregnant. Oh Allah, I have a goal. If you give me a child, I will dedicate that child for your path, for, you, for the sake of you. Oh Allah, inni wada'tuha untha. Oh Allah, it's girl, not boy. Oh Allah, I named her Maryam. Oh Allah, protect her and everything. Because she feels that closeness. So when you hear this ayat, at everything you whisper, Allah knows, and he 
just give a job for two angels to, to record everything that you feel that you have to do something secretly. Then he said after that, إِلَّا رَدِهَا قِيمَةً وَجَاءَتْ سَكْرَةُ الْمَوْتِ بِالْحَقِّ When death comes, but when Allah talk about death, he says, سَكْرَةُ الْمَوْتِ Literally, is a drunk status. Drunk status. Because when you attend any of your relatives, in the last moment, it's a difficult moment. You talk to him or her, they don't listen to you. They are in different world. They are still alive. But the sea angels now in a way, subhanallah, may Allah protect all of us. When you see that, that's a big reminder for you. Sakratul maut. But he say, bil haqq. Sakratul maut, bring the truth. In that moment, you'll see everything. A person will see the state in angel before he is just now about to die. In that moment, haq now, everything now, truth become. No one can deny anything in that moment. وَجَاءَتْ سَكْرَةُ الْمَوْتِ بِالْحَقِّ ذَلِكَ مَا كُنْتَ مِنْهُ تَحِيدٌ That is what you tried to escape. Tahid means escape. All your life, you know you will die. But you don't want to do anything or prepare yourself after death. You don't want to hear anything about hereafter. So Allah created and gave us a chance in this dunya. That chance will finish with death. You will go through four stages in your life. Stage number one on this dunya. On the ground, on the earth. The second stage is underground. In the grave. The third stage in a special land in the day of judgment. And the fourth stage is eternal. In Jannah, نسأل الله ذلك. May Allah make us among Ahlul Jannah. Or in Nar, أعوذ بالله من النار. Four stages. You know, the shortest one is on the earth. Is the one on the earth. That's the shortest. Even if you live 100 years, still very short. If you compare it to the other stages. Shortest one and the most important one. Why most important? Because all your status in the, the rest of stages depend to your good deeds here. So your status in the grave depend to your amal, your deeds here. In the day of judgment, Will you be under the shade of the throne of Allah? It depends on your deeds in this shortest time. Will you be in Jannah or not? That depends on your work in dunya. dunya. Very short, very critical. And the problem is you don't know when you will die. So you have to have always be ready. Ready to die. Always. So we can't escape from this. In another word, we have to prepare ourselves. Then the trumpet now sounded. Israfil, Qiyama, start with a huge, big sound. You know why? Because if there is something very important and you don't want to make a very important announcement, then you will say, shout for people. You want to wake them up. Also, that so strong sound will bring all people from their graves. It seems they are heedless. Come, all of you. Nufiqa fi sur. Thalika yawmul That is the day that Allah warned us a lot. That's why Quran is full of warning people, of Jannah, of Nah. Quran always talk about what will happen in details. And we recite this in this dunya. That's out of his mercy, tabaraka wa ta'ala. He want to warn us. Make everything clear for every single person. ذَلِكَ مَا كُنْتَ مِنْهُ تَحِيدٌ So now you're brought to the judgment. In this land, Allah told us that we will stand there for 50,000 years. One day, 
There is no night. There is no night in the day of judgment. It's only day. That's why Allah said, أَصْحَابُ الْجَنَّةِ يَوْمَئِذٍ خَيْرٌ مُسْتَقَرًّا وَأَحْسَنُ مَقِيلًا Maqil is what after dhuhr. So they will go to Jannah, it means it's just a day. But a long day. And in that day, just before even judgment, all people will stand for a long time, just waiting. That's why they will go to the prophets, Adam, Nuh, Ibrahim, Musa, Isa, Nuh, and they beg them, talk to your Lord just to start judgment. No one can talk that day. Even the Anbiya Allah, they said, nafsi, nafsi. I'm concerned about myself. I can't talk to my Lord today. Except our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam. May Allah give us shafa'a of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He's the only one can talk in that day. And even he can't talk till he prostrate before the Almighty. Allah, is, Allah that day is not pleased with people because majority of them, they disobey. So before he even opened his mouth, he will go and prostrate before the Lord. That's the longest sajda we know ever. He said, Allah will leave me in, in, in long sujood. And he will teach me that day type of praising him I never know it before. Wait a minute. Rasulullah is the most knowledgeable when we come to knowing Allah. Wa he taught us a lot of praising Allah. Wa and then he said, in that day, Allah will teach me type of praising I never know it before. What does that mean? It means what we know about Almighty in this dunya. Even the Anbiya Allah is very limited. In the day of judgment, the day of truth, Allah will told us something. If we know it now, we can't even imagine it. Of his glorification, of his azamah, of his jalal. So Rasulullah is praise his Lord with some jalal. That's amazing. And this Almighty, and we very simply very simple, we always commit a sin. We don't care about that. He is watching us all the day. Subhanallah. So now we are the people now in the day of judgment. In the day of judgment, just with that first moment, ask Allah wa to give you that shade. To be under the shade of the throne of Almighty. They told us, Rasulullah that if you Make a sincere deed between you and your Lord. You will be in that status. That's high status. Then Surah now talk about now you are in the day of judgment. Surah talk in a words that you are like in a court. This is a divine court. And when the criminal come to the court, there's always a policeman come and push him. Come just behind him. Grab his hand. Allah said, Allah said, وَجَاءَتْ كُلُّ نَفْسِ Every single person Allah created, he will come to that court. مَعَهَا سَائِقٌ وَشَهِيدٌ With that, every single person, two angels. سَائِق and شَهِيد. سَائِق literally is drive him. But the meaning here is سوق in all Quran, it means push him forward. Because he's a criminal. So that angel pushed him forward to the divine court. And the second angel, his job is shaheed, witness. So one push him, one bear witness. The, why two angels? Because these are the same angels. They are with you all your life. One in right side and one in left side. Now they came to give a report for Almighty in that divine court. The court now start. One of the two angels will said, وَقَالَ قَرِينُهُ هَذَا مَا لَدَيَّ عَتِيدٌ Qareen in Arabic, it means companion. The one who always with you. 
That's called Qarim. The plural is Qurana in Quran also. Qarin in Surah Qaf mentioned twice. One with wow, one without wow. The first one, waqala qarinu. The second one, qala qarinu. If the same statement, and he put wow here and remove wow here, in Arabic language, he wants to tell you something. Arabic language is very concise. And just add any letter or remove any letter, it means something. You want you to pay attention. Qareen, in the first time, not like the Qareen in the second time. Different. Waqala Qareenuhu, the first one is the angel. Qala Qareenuhu, next time, is the devil. Because there is two Qareens, two types of Qareen, with you all your life. Two angels, that's the good Qareen, and the devil Qareen. Shaitan is also with you since you were born till you die. So you have two Qareen. One encourages you to do good things, one whispers to you to do bad things. Both of them will come to the court. So the first one, which is the angel one, he said, قَالَ قَرِينُهُ هذا ما لدي عتيد. He carries something with his hand. That's the record. This is what, what I have recorded. I recorded everything as you command to me, O oh my Lord. So imagine this type of divine court. The criminal push them, and then the court start, and then the witness now. This is everything. And the witnesses are a lot in, not just only the angel. The angels which live with you all their life, they will be witnesses. The earth will be witness. إِلَى زُلْزِلَةِ الْأَرْضُ الزِّلْزَالَهَا وَأَخْرَجَةِ الْأَرْضُ أَثْقَالَهَا وَقَالَ الْإِنسَانُ مَا لَهَا يَوْمَئِذٍ تُحَدِّثُ أَخْبَارَهَا That day she will tell everything. What's everything? Everything happened on this earth. The earth will speak. When you hide yourself from your parents or from your spouse and you just you want to go to some place, haram, or you want just a young man hide himself from his parents and take his laptop to his room and open that laptop to some websites that Allah wa ta'ala prohibited you to look at it and spend all your night seeing haram the angels reported everything. Allah Almighty is watching you and you don't care. And when you heard any voice that one of your parents maybe wake up to go to the toilet, when you heard that voice, straight away, you close the laptop and you pretend that you are sleeping. So you care about your parents only. What about the one who created you, give you everything, and he is with you all the time watching you. What's the shyness from Allah Taala? And then when you did that sin and you go to the school or to the college or the university, no one can look at you and say, you spend all the night in sin or bad things. Out of his mercy he cover us. Imagine if we commit sin and we come in the morning and everyone, there's a sign that that person committed sin last night. He never do that. He will cover us and he will give us chance after chance after chance. He never close the door of repentance. And when you repent to him, maybe after 20 years of committing sin, when you come to him, you just need one thing, to be sincere. You come sincerely, you regret about everything, and you raise your hand, Oh my Lord, forgive me. You know, in that moment, just one moment, He will forgive you everything. 20 years in one moment. If I did something wrong for you and I come, please forgive me. You may forgive me one time, two times, three times, but if I keep doing that 20 years, I will never forgive you. But Allah, just in one moment, He will forgive you 
and he will love you. La ilaha illallah. He mentioned his name, Al Wadud, the All Loving, with Al Ghafur, Surah Al Buruj. Al Ghafur Al Wadud. Ghafur first and Wadud. He forgive you and he love you. Like Rasulullah said, love you for what? Just because you turn back to him. He know that shaitan is, you go far away, now my slaves come to me. Allah is the most generous. When you deal with him, he will reward you in a way it's unbelievable. So now in the court, that angel say, هَذَا مَا لَدَيَّ عَتِيدٌ so that's the witness. The earth will be witness. In another places in Quran, if they, they will deny some deniers, and Allah will give them witnesses from themselves. Their limbs will talk. Their hands will talk. Their legs will talk. Yes, he went in that place in that night. So this is a divine court. You can't escape. هَذَا مَا لَدَيَّ عَتِيدٌ In Surah Qaf, Allah Almighty give the verdict straight away. In other surahs, there is a debate in that court. There is a discussion. And the deniers say this, and then the angels say that. Allah said, that, where is the evidence? But in Surah Qaf, no. هَذَا مَا لَدَيَّ عَتِيدٌ أَلْقِيَا فِي جَهَنَّمْ Straight away the verdict come. Throw in hell fire those people. Because Surat Qaf in a way is so strong. In another word, there is no need for this discussion. Everything is clear. You have two Qareen with you all the life and they recorded everything. So Allah said, Al-Qiyya fi Jahannam. Al-Qiyya, it means throw. But al qiya this alif is a pronoun referred to two people. If it's one people, he will say al qi. If it's a plural, al qu. But al qiya it means Allah here talked to two people. What's these two people? The angels. Again, who? Your companions or the life. The sa'iq and the shaheed. The one who push you in the, the, and the one who be witness. They said to them, he said to them, Al-Qiyah, throw fi jahannam. Kulla kaffarin anid. He didn't say kafir. He said kaffar. That's sigat mubalagha. And anid, it means stubborn. Why kaffar stubborn? It means I, Allah said he gave him chance after chance after chance. And he's stubborn. He never received them. He never want to repent to Allah. And then he said, Man lil khair. Another form of balagha. Another form also of just not mana'a. No, manna'a. He always prevent khair from himself and from others. Allah want khair to him, but he doesn't want that khair. Mu'tadin. Mu'i'tida is to oppress him. I'tida is, he is aggressive. A theme. Mu'tadin murib. Doubta and spread doubt to others. He doubt about the resurrection and he spread the knowledge of doubt. No, don't care about it. There is no God. الَّذِي جَعَلَ مَعَ اللَّهِ إِلَهًا آخر. The one who associates another one with God. فَأَلْقِيَاهُ فِي الْعَذَابِ الشَّعِدِ شديد. Put him in a severe punishment. Now the second Qareen talk. قَالَ قَرِين which is the devil. Shaytan. رَبَّنَا مَا أَطْغَيْتُهُ وَلَكِنْ كَانَ فِي ضَلَالٍ بَعِيدٍ Oh Allah, it's not my fault. I didn't deviate him. That's his choice, which is right. So now because then Allah said, there's something here Allah elaborate in another surah. A debate between the leaders and the followers in hellfire. The followers, they said, those leaders misguide us. Put them in hellfire, but we are, it's not our fault. 
Allah said, no. I give you ability to say no to the devil. That's why Allah finished this. He said, لا تختصموا لدي. Don't argue in my presence. وقد قدمت إليكم بالوعيد. I already warn you when you are in dunya. ما يبدل القول بدي. When I make a verdict, it will never change. وما أنا بظلام للعبيد. Allah never. Allah always just and fair. He will never put someone in hellfire and he doesn't deserve it. Allah is the all fair and just and merciful. Tabaraka wa ta'ala. In this year then he go to the Jannah, which is next time, inshallah, we talk about. So the main point here is that's a journey. Sit down with yourself and try to make some secret ibadat even your wife, even your parent doesn't know about it. Grab something in your hand when you come to your Lord. You go to a one charity and you didn't tell your wife or your parents if you are single and say, I want a kafala of yatim. I want orphan or many orphans in different country. Don't talk to anyone. Make it secret. In the day of judgment, that will benefit you. Or talk to your Lord every single night and pray to Raka'ah and switch off that light. That secret ibadat will benefit us in the day of judgment. May Allah wa ta'ala guide us to the straight path. May Allah wa ta'ala make us among those Ahlul Jannah. May Allah wa ta'ala forgive all our sins. Wallahu alam wa sallallahu ala abdi rasulis Sayyidina Muhammad.